located at 1896 Table Road. Applicant Fairlight is requesting final site plan approval to reflect minor modifications to the original approved site plan associated with the construction of the 785,000 square foot milk processing plant, warehouse, and support service buildings on an approximately 106 acre parcel having SPL number 066.23-1-28 0.001, located in the IM Industrial District, under Section 269-9D of the Code of Town of Western. Okay. What's that? It's final site plan approval. It shouldn't be a site plan modification. Yeah, really, that, yeah, I would agree with you, Dave. That should probably read as yeah, modification to the final approved site plan. <coughs> That's okay. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, sitting next to me is uh, Josh Hopp, Director of Civil Engineering for Haskell. Myself, Darren Ward, Senior Director for Fairlife, who's overseeing the current construction project and uh, startup of the factory in its entirety. So, as it lays out, we just want to walk you through some of the changes we made to the civil plan, provide some explanations to why we've done that and uh, hopefully, hopefully get a better understanding of where we go. I just wanted a quick project refresh and nothing too onerous. So the production facility itself is just under 800,000 square feet. It sits on 110 acres. The facility itself will apply or employ approximately 250 positions from management, operations, admin roles, etc. And on a typical day, we will process somewhere in the, in the region of five million plus pounds of dairy product milk, capturing all of that within a hundred mile radius of the plant. Okay, just a quick update as we've got views from the west and uh, we have views from the east as well, I believe. So just to give you a brief update of where we're sitting in the current construction plan. So really what we'd like to do is, is there's seven items that we want to walk through to explain the before, the original civil plan, and what we've done to change that, why we've changed it, and give everybody a, a detailed background. So number one, uh, if you don't mind Josh, we'll go through them. So what you'll see is a format for all of the slides is what it was originally on the left and what we proposed to do on the right. So in the original proposal, we were going to utilize a scale building. So we would bring in the milk, weigh the milk, uh, add a full tanker, empty the milk, and then the tanker would leave, go back on the scale, validate what is emptied, and move back around the site. Since then, we've explored other technologies, and we've decided that we're going to measure the flow of milk coming out of the tanker, so we no longer need to weigh the tanker. So with that in mind, we've shortened the route that the tanker will now take around the site, so we're still coming through the guardhouse, um, but a lot, lot shorter route as you can see going up into milk receiving, which is the white building at the top of the page north. And then we've also added the direct tanker exit. If you see, instead of having to go back around the site, it will now pull straight back out of milk receiving going forward and exit the site immediately. So it's really been driven by us utilizing different technology and allowing us to shorten the linear length of the roadway quite considerably and reduce the amount of time to trucks are starting and stop. Any, any further questions on that one before I move to the next? I have a question. After these uh, tankers are empty, do they have to be cleaned out of there or anything? Or sometimes and sometimes not. So it really depends how many times they've been used that day. If they're, like, if they're on their third and final run of the day, then we will clean them inside the building before they leave for the for the remainder of the day. So this new the new design you're showing here actually reduces a lot of the asphalt. Right? Yes, yeah, we've reduced a lot of the impervious surface there and yeah, uh, that's a lot of truck movement. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So by the very nature of moving the scales, we've also moved the truck guardhouse. We've moved it further into the property to ensure that we've still got the correct amount of tanker spaces and tanker queuing before 
the truck guard house. Um, just to give you a little background to the operation, every single milk tanker that comes into our facility has a 15 minute slot, which is an appointment that they have to be there by. And when they do come in, they get way through at the truck house. We're not, we're not stopping them to check anything at that point. All those checks are done at milk receiving. So they literally, they come through, they get way through the pro into the property. The administration and the testing of the milk receiving all happens in the building. So really, this is just a very uh, product of moving the roadway or moving the truck guard house to make, to make it an obvious straight shot into the property. Yeah, and to Darren's point, we, we do still maintain the uh, seven, 17 inch truck staging that we had in the original group. Mm -hmm. The super tank, where is the super tank? Where are the super tankers? Are they larger trucks or something? Yeah, so a, a super tanker is considered 10,000 gallons, a typical tanker is 6,000. There are some 10,000 gallon super tankers, but it's not common. Uh -huh. So they mix, it's a very typical mixture. Is there any safety checks at the guardhouse? We, we, safety, we're safety checking <clears throat> at, at the receiver. So that, that's where that operation happens. Okay. Any more further questions on the next one, if that's okay? So at a point we were waiting for the Department of uh, Environmental and the Army Corps of Engineers to, <coughs> to make a determination on a small piece of, of uh, what we wanted to determine that it was not wetland. Once we got that determination, as you can see in the top left hand corner, we decided to take some of the trailer parking spaces away to the right of the picture in the yellow box and move them up in front of the dock doors, which for us is a more efficient operation to move the trailers to where they'll finally be loaded and unloaded. So we always uh, kept that off of the plans because we wanted to make sure that determination was made by the Corps of Engineers and New York's State Environment. So the same amount of parking spaces, we just reconfigured them. And it doesn't impact any drainage or anything in that area, does it? No, you'll see that we have the similar uh, drainage swales to the north. Okay. So we added a new, another drainage swell just to the north, to the north of that to handle that additional uh, drill work in there. Okay. I don't want to rush in, but just yeah. No, I guess you're also. that and we have submitted it to the town. So when we first laid out the civil plan, we were still working on the details of the wastewater treatment plant, which sits in the bottom corner of the property. Um, the, the images that you see on the left hand side was really a conceptual design. What, we've, what you see on the right is the final detailed design. So the number of tanks and the rate of flow, nothing, nothing has changed there. If anything, we've really just spaced out the roadway a little bit around it, but the actual wastewater treatment building has been reduced in square footage. So again, we, we put the road in all the way around so we're not backing up any vehicles, etc. so everyone's got a path around it. So really, the tanks remain closed, Everything is the same flow rate, same design, it's just a reconfiguration of the tanks in the building. So the pre treatment building reduction is 800 square feet yeah. reduction. Wow. Yeah. Again, I mean, I think a lot of that's driven by the technology as we, we go out and look for innovation. Well, all these modern things that are being changed with modern. Modern technology, wait another year, what might even be better yet? <laughs> that you're always you're always <laughs> behind. Yeah. Going. It's always risk versus reward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Any yeah. further questions? No. Okay. Please jump. Um, you can see on the left hand side versus the right hand side. This is really about us increasing some of the berms around the perimeter of our property, giving us more uh, landscaping capabilities, providing a bit more green space. Um, and if you look on the left hand side, you can see to the far left there's a small linear berm that we've now changed to more of a round berm. Mm -hmm. And we've done that with the view that that way we can scatter the trees on that berm and get more privacy and less line of sight for our neighbours off to the top corner of that property. And if you look also, we've added some more trees back in the top corner of that property, close to the perimeter of our neighbours. So really that's, it's really just creating a little bit more green space for us. It gives us a little bit more flexibility on landscaping and uh, just trying to be mindful of, of our language, really. Just a question. Are you folks are neighbors around that? I guess? Okay, no, just a question. Can you, can you see it okay on the screen here? Yes. Okay, I didn't know how that was working out there, so, okay. Just so they're aware of it, too. I'm sorry, go ahead. <coughs> Any more questions on number five? So this is really, again, around the conceptual design at the beginning when we were first uh, designing the building, not really knowing what our outside space would be for our employees. So the, what you see on the left is really a, just a small pavilion with some very basic grass landscaping. What you see on the right is more extensive landscaping and we put some, some walking paths in. Really just a matter of trying to improve the experience for our employees during their break, etc., when they go outside. So it was really one of those elements that was conceptual to begin with, and as we got further into the design, it was like, okay, listening to our employees and our associates, what, what we'd like to see outside. So it's it's more of a an experience within that break time to go outside, walk the path, sit on the bench, and get away from the uh, hustle bustle. One thing to point out on this, that the trees that are in this area are in addition to what was on the original proof plan. So it's not that we moved trees from the other areas, these were in addition to it. So that all of these trees are added from the original number. Mm -hmm. Just to make them more purple. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, I think that's very attractive. Yeah. And again, reduce the building square footage of the employee pavilion, 1,500 foot. So there's a whole lot less. Service. Yes. This yeah, I think that's the running theme really throughout. Right. And the last item number seven is I'm going to hand over to Josh because he knows far more about this than I do. Yeah, so, so we wanted to include this slide because there was some concerns about drainage. So we met with some of the neighbors about the drainage concerns around the property, and then also met with uh, Pat Stevens with the Town of Webster Drainage Department to walk through those concerns and the, the resolution. So. I just wanted to walk through those real quick with you just so you can see that uh, we've considered all those areas and that they have been addressed. So working from the uh, the northeast corner, the, uh, the yellow, that's our main discharge point. So that is actually the, the existing discharge point that we're still using. So in the original state, this property all drained from south to north to where the, uh, the that yellow uh, node is. So we're maintaining that. And as you go around to the north, uh, we are also maintaining that drainage as well. So we put in the L-shaped berm that's on the north side, and so that's keeping the drainage uh, from the top of the berm continue to go north, and from the uh, south of the berm going down the wetlands, and that matches what the original conditions were. Uh, as you go around to the, uh, the other side of the north, there is a, uh, a drainage swale just off our property, and so we're maintaining that as well. And then that goes into the wetlands that run, uh, you can see kind of going across that lower part of the property in the northeast corner, uh, that is a low area. And so uh, we are matching that. Um, just to the south end, you can see that blue line. That is a uh, underground uh, storm system that we've added. So in its original state, this area used to drain to the north to that corner. That blue pipe actually captures the runoff on the berm. 
and now takes it over through our pond system. So we're actually reducing the amount of runoff that's going to that northeast corner. Mm -hmm. So in its existing state, before we started, it was a low area that had water. Uh, it's still low because it's off of our property, but we're reducing the amount of water that's going over there from our property. Um, as you come to the south, uh, so there were some <coughs> concerns about making sure that we capture that water uh, that's coming off the berm so it doesn't go to the east. Uh, so we are putting in a, uh, a V-bottom swale just to the south of that blue line to make sure that we capture any of that runoff. And there's an existing berm that is just in the east of our property. So right now we're, we're putting, we put in the new berm, there's an existing berm that kind of creates a valley. And that water then goes to the north up to the blue, right here, and we capture that and take it through our pond system. <clears throat> then as you come to the south, um, where you kind of have the, the S curve, uh, that area goes into another drainage soil, it's an existing soil. So we're continuing that drainage into that area. And then as you come to the south of the page at, uh, at Route 104, that area goes out to the Mill Road right of and we're continuing that as well. So there's a berm on that south side, that's the green you can see. So everything south of that continues to go into the railroad that right of way, and then to the north of that goes onto our property is captured into our storm drainage system. And then the, uh, the west side, kind of that whole length uh, up to where it turns, uh, the property uh, goes to the east. So everything that hits the property line comes into our property is captured in our stormwater system. So there's no discharge at all to the west in that area. And then you come around the, uh, the south pond, uh, so uh, our neighbor just to the, the south of that pond, that area goes, uh, flows to the north, and we're going to continue that flow. So that will flow into our stormwater pond to match the existing conditions. And then to finish it out, just uh, next to the rock gym, there's a drainage swale, and we're maintaining that as well. Um, we'll continue to flow, so just a small area into there to match the system. So just wanted to show this to you guys so you can see that we're uh, we're trying to, to make sure that we are uh, a good neighbor and that we're capturing any of these concerns that are coming up. Any questions on the drainage? So that blue pipe on the east side of that, that perimeter drainage and storm pipe, that is on the back side of the berm. Correct. And that collects it and then brings it back into the property to the detention. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So originally we had it going up to the northeast corner, but because of the elevations, uh -huh. uh, we weren't able to get enough cover on the pipe. And so we found that it would be better to take it to the west over into our drainage system, which then also reduces the amount of water going to that uh, northeast corner where there's uh, standing water that's usually there. Mm -hmm. Anybody questions on it? Sorry? That was the last item. That's your last one. Yeah, thank so, you. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, they're here for you know changes <clears throat> to the original proof site plan. Um, looking at it, as far as what I can see so far here, is the changes have been favorable as far as reducing environmental issues. I mean, less blacktop, more green space, more landscaping. Anybody have any issues or comments on that at that point? I think those, to me, those are the biggest things. Um, all the details as far as drainage and so on and so forth, <clears throat> they, they prove you that actually is engineering detail and that's all been done by Paul and so on. So, I know you all spent a lot of time working on this one, right? Sure did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anybody, John, any questions there? Okay, again, this uh, this was just for a modification of approved site plan. This is not a public hearing this evening, but right? um, standards. Um, I don't see where I'm looking at everything they showed us. I'm reading some notes here. And I'm willing to move forward with a motion to approve the modifications. <coughs> All right, with that, okay. yeah. All right, then let's make a motion. I'll make a motion that we grant the approval for Fair Life for the modifications <coughs> to, for a modification to the final approved site plan for uh, Fair Life Coca-Cola. 
And I think, uh, again, I'll just add a couple of things I said that you that wrote for us. Just decrease the asphalt and increase the landscaping. Uh, it's less impact and proposed modifications they've shown and other things on it also. Uh, and I think what we, we should have in here this, this part also, I believe. Uh, this is something that's still to be done, I believe. Uh, the entire perimeter of the site shall be given further review by Haskell as construction proceeds to ensure no standing water will be created impacting neighbors' properties. <coughs> and there will need to be steps to address the stagnant water and more care to the drainage practices around the perimeter of the entire site. The reduction in drainage is noted um, in areas such as the POA-5. The rest of the perimeter will need to continue to promote stormwater to travel along the base of the berm and not pond for more than 48 hours. Prolonging the ponding at the base of the berm indicates a failure in the conveyance and will need to be assessed and remediated. Uh, this shall continue to be monitored during the SWIPS inspection and corrections made as necessary. Okay? Yes. All right, that's something you guys need to work out with engineering. And, okay. and along the, I guess that would be it. I don't think we have anything else in there. We're just approving modification as presented. Mm -hmm. Along with this, no, right? Mm -hmm. You okay with that, Josh? I think that's all we need to cover. Yes. Okay, then that would be on motion. I'll second that. Have a second. Mr. Kishani. Mr. Malta. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Kosel. Aye. Mrs. Malman. Aye. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Good. good luck with the projects. Going nice. Yeah.